Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today, I am joined by the beautiful Christy. Christy, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having I, me on. Oh, no, this is such a huge thing for me. So, um, before we talk about the reason why you're here, Christy, I would like to talk about some of the things that you've done. So, um, you are huge in the horror world. Obviously, Nightmare Toys is something that is very big. And people absolutely adore it. So for the people that don't know about Nightmare Toys, can you give us a little bit about what you guys do? Yeah. Um, Nightmare Toys, uh, we started that in July of 2017 in Alabama. We um, moved the store to Las Vegas. So we're now in Las Vegas. Um, we've been here for about two years now. And we carry anything and everything horror that you want. Clothing, masks, costumes, makeup collectibles games anything anything we can get our hands on that's horror you know we'll get it movies vinyl everything um we, six thousand square foot store and then we're about to open up a, a restaurant and bar too as well next door oh congratulations that's so awesome i didn't know that i'm really happy for you that's amazing uh, yeah thanks yeah so it, is that also going to be horror themed or is that just going to be no it's, it's nightmare cafe is what it's called but it's not a coffee shop. <laughs> do, you, do you know why I named it Nightmare Cafe? I do not. See, a lot of people don't. So I have to explain this. So when I named it Nightmare Cafe, I was like, after I did it, we got the LLC. Then I thought about it. And I was like, oh, people are going to think this is a coffee shop because cafe. But it's not. It's a restaurant bar. But I named it because, number one, Nightmare goes with Nightmare Toys. And right. Nightmare Cafe was a 1992 series with Robert England, only lasted six episodes. Oh, see, I'm going to have to, I'm literally writing that right now. Yeah. Because I would like to check that out. And congratulations, because if you're opening a cafe now, and like I said, I know you said it's a, it's a restaurant bar, it's not right. a coffee shop. Right. But the fact that you're doing that now shows the growth in what you guys are doing. And it shows that um, you are doing something right. And that's amazing. And I'm super happy for you. I'm super proud of you because I know that it can be stressful to run a business. And, you know, the fact that you're doing so successful with Nightmare Toys and you're able to branch off and do these new endeavors, that's amazing. And um, a lot of people don't know how to manage one business and you're getting ready to go into business with your second one. So I'm very, very proud of you. That's super awesome. And um, if any of you want to check out Nightmare Toys, which I cannot recommend enough, I have all the links right down here in the description, as well as all the links to Christy on social media. So make sure you're giving these a little check out. Make sure you're peeping what they're doing over there, because I promise you, you will not regret it at all. But um, what gave you the idea to want to start Nightmare Toys? What was the big kick in the pants to get you started on that? <laughs> um, I'll give the honest answer. It's very simple. Um, I had a job. I was actually a dancer. Oh, Helpless dancer for 17 years. And of course, you get to a point with something like that that you just can't do it anymore. I'm getting a little older. So um I me and my boyfriend Philip, he's he's also a uh, owner in the store as well. It's me and him together. Um he was just like, Well, you know, you gotta do something. So um he's owned some other businesses, so he's the business, he's really business minded. I'm like the horror fan of it. And um <laughs> Yeah, and he was just like, well, let's just open up here a little, you know, a little collectible store just to, just to give you something to do. Right. Here's my something to do. We are now. And look at how long it's gone. That's... We're about to have a restaurant. Um, so, yeah, it was just supposed to be a little something for me to just kind of have something to do while he's off at his work and his businesses. And, yeah, and it blew up. So. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. Well, I mean, when you have hard work and you do something right and you have a great idea it's always going to go far. The big thing is a lot of people come up with this really good idea, but they don't have the initiative. They don't have to drive to really go out and put their whole heart and soul into it. You've done that. And you've put your blood, sweat, tears, put your shirt back on and gone to work. So um, I've done a lot with okay, it. Yes. The way that I just said that sounded really bad. No, it's fine. dancing is work. I'm not saying you weren't working before. Yes. Anybody that knows me knows dancing stripping, sex work, it's all work. Whatever you do, if you're doing it and you're putting your body out there on the line, that's work and it's your fucking business, no one else's. So the way I said that came off really rude and I didn't mean it like that, I promise. You're fine, you're fine. Okay. Um, well, so we know what you got now with Nightmare Toys and we know what you got going on in the future, Christy, with Nightmare Cafe. But here for a second, I want to go back to the past. 
and talk yeah. about what got you started in the horror genre that we all know and love so much. Your first horror movie. And Christy, the first horror movie that you watched was? Well, honestly, the first thing that horror related thing that I watched that got me into it was Michael Jackson's thriller video. Mm -hmm. That's what excited me. That's what was like, oh, I like being scared. Ooh, I like this stuff. And then they did the making of Thriller, which mm -hmm. got me really more into it because I got to see the background and all the makeup and Rick Baker <laughs> and um, uh, John Landis. And then they, um, he, Michael Jackson was a big fan of American World in London. So they showed a lot of that in, in the making of Thriller. And I was just fascinated. I was like five, six. Mm -hmm. um, so I watched that religiously. Um, the first like recollection though of like a movie would have been Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. Ooh. But there, I could have had a movie before that, but I just remember Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two because me and my parents were watching it together. And now that I think about that, I'm like, ooh, that's a little weird. <laughs> well, the because good thing I is, was, like, I was thinking back then, like. That's a little strange. Why is why is that happening? You know, mm -hmm. but it got and, me into Freddy Nightmare on Elm Street, and then I went and watched the first one. Then I was like, "Ooh, I gotta watch the first one now." You know, kind of a thing. So right. Well, and it's funny because, like, as a kid, I didn't like to, and it's I didn't. It wasn't because of anything with the gay undertones or anything like that. I've never really right. cared about anything like that. But it was just when I was a little boy, it was way too dark for me. You know, it, like it was just really dark. Um, as an adult, I adore Nightmare on Elm Street too, and it has one of my favorite scenes in the whole Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. To be honest with you, um, so would you rather talk about Nightmare Two or the OG Nightmare? Either one. Because I want to pick your brain a little bit. Well, let's I'm talk good. about two. I, <laughs> I'm going I, don't to, one. <laughs> I, I don't get to talk about two all that much, and since you believe you watched that one first, I want to talk to you about this a little bit. Um, but first and foremost, I want to say. I don't condone anything that Michael Jackson has ever been accused of. Um, obviously, I think that's pathetic. And if it's true, that's heartbreaking because I'm with you. Thriller is something that changed my life. Um, and that music video, like you said, that created to me what a music video should be. Um, it was scary. It was fun. It made you want to dance. You know, like Thriller, I still believe, is one of the best songs ever written. Mm -hmm. And for you to start off that way to me, is so epic because the king of pop got you into the queen of horror and i just think that's such an amazing that's statement to be able to make but it also he, he was also for my love of dance too so my love of dance and my love of horror the two really the only things i've ever really been into my entire life came from michael jackson literally came from michael jackson like he's been a huge influence in my life so uh and i believe all the rumors were just for, that was all for money <laughs> i, I, <laughs> I, I think so too i really do <laughs> but i think it's I, been bunk that it know. was for money too i think there was something that came out but yeah but anyway but yeah he's he's like my huge influence on the on the two things that i just love in life so yeah and it's amazing to be able to have someone like that you know like we all have that person that pushes us to make us better and influence us and like i said without michael jackson you wouldn't be sitting here today. Probably not, because literally, I swear to you, that that just fueled the fire in me because I was just like, oh my God, this is so fantastic. This is like so entertaining, but yet I'm I'm scared. I'm so scared, but I loved it. Right. Like I loved being scared. It was really crazy. My, my mom and my dad thought I was weird. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just love it. Now, I can say this. There are pictures of me, but I just don't remember it. But there are pictures of me when I was three. So this is even way before all that of me watching with the family Jaws 3. Oh. We all have the 3D glasses on because I remember my dog had it on. The three They had the 3D glasses on our dog, too. And we all had a picture of all of us sitting there watching that. Um but I just don't remember that. I just remember right. that photo. So that probably was my really my first horror movie, if you want to call it that. Or right. <laughs> well, it's like I agree though. Like if you can't remember it, you can't really speak on it. So I definitely get where you're coming from with that. No, which is funny. <laughs> well, in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, um, 
we know you were younger. You know, you said what about seven or eight when you watched yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I was like seven. And you, we know you're with your parents. And this is a movie that, as a, over time, it's gained really a cult following. I would really say that Nightmare on Elm Street Two is the Halloween Three of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. When it came out, no one understood it. No one really dug it. But now it's really gained a huge cult following. Um, yeah. Which scene would you say was the one that affected you the most from Nightmare 2? Very easy answer. It's one of the only things that's really ever scared me besides the movie The Changeling. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the bus scene at the very beginning, the whole yeah. bus thing, that scared the crap out of me. And I guess it's probably because I rode a bus, you know? Right. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, is my bus driver going to run off in some, you know, in some field and the ground's going to fall out? And, you know, that scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Sorry. The yeah. shit out of me more than anything else in that movie. You're yeah. fine to swear. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> but yeah, I love the, that whole, the whole beginning, the whole bus thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that they really took a risk on this movie. Um, you know, this movie really, it, it had nothing to do with the original, you know, they really went in their own brand new direction on Freddy's, mm -hmm. Freddy's Revenge, I believe is what the subtitle is. Um, and they made it so dark. And in this movie, they had the ability because in the original Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's only in the movie for seven minutes. Like he only has seven minutes of screen time in that movie because they just didn't have the budget to make him look the same every single time. So they had to kind of, you know, zig and zag a little bit, but in this movie, the budget went up. You got to see Freddy a little bit more. Um, we know what scene affected you the most, Christy, but what would you say your favorite scene from Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is? Um, favorite would be uh, the pool party. I mean, it's just amazing when he's, you know, you're all my children now. You are all my children now. And like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I and they're rooting for him. It's so weird. <laughs> that's, that's the only time you've ever gotten to see in the whole franchise, Freddy Krueger go on a killing spree. You know, yeah. he's been brought in the real world. And he's just killing everybody. And and chasing everybody. And that whole thing is just insane. And then even in the house, it's scary with her. You know, he's kind of chasing her in the house a little bit and going, it, that whole thing really is scary. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. Like I dig what you're saying. Like I was saying a little bit ago, I was saying that, you know, one of my favorite scenes of any nightmare on Elm street movie is that the pool party scene, you know, from the, you're all my children now to watching him go on a real killing spree. Right. You know, like that to me, because Freddie's never really had a huge body count in his movies. It's never been a huge body count, but um, to watch him go on a massacre around that pool is just, it's such a great scene to watch. Like I love that scene so much. And that kind of brings me into my next question as horror fans, something that we all love is the kills. You know, we love to watch the kills. Uh, which kill from Freddy's Revenge would you say is your favorite? Um, I would say when they're he's killing his friend. What's his friend's name now? In the Adam bedroom Robert, when he's, what's when he's coming out of his body. Yes, all that. Yeah, that whole thing when he kills his friend in there and then he comes out of his body, that whole thing. Yeah, that death is so great because we get to see that's, you know, Freddy's entrance into the real world, you know, coming right. through that body is such an amazing right. moment in that movie. And, um, it's one of the moments where you're watching it and your heart drops, your heart yeah. just drops to the floor. So um, we know that too, and executed it very well. Yes. And I, I love the fact that they took these risks with this movie. And uh, Christy, we know that horror started with you with Michael Jackson's thriller, but we know your first horror movie was Nightmare on Elm Street 2. But now I kind of want to throw a little bit of a curveball here at you for a second. My little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. Okay. What's your favorite scary movie, Christy? <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Um, April Fool's Day. Oh, nice. The OG one? Yeah. Oh. The one with Biff from Back to the Future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that movie. That movie has, um, it, it's one of the smartest slashers that you can possibly get because the deaths are great. The acting is phenomenal. I am such a huge fan of the OG April Fool's Day and I'm so happy. Ashley and I, we do a segment on Sledgehammer Horror called Versus. And what we do is we talk about an original, we talk about a remake and then we verse them off against each other. And that episode was amazing because we got to watch the first April Fool's Day, but I'll always have a sour note about that episode because we had to watch the remake too. 
And I think that the remake to April Fool's Day may be one of the worst films I've ever seen. And I'm not trying to slam anybody. The people that were in it are great. You got great, phenomenal actors and actresses in the movie. But have you seen the the remake to it? Oh, yeah, I own it. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, when, when I, after we were done watching it, I was like, babe, we paid for this. Like, we bought this movie. Because obviously, if, if we cover anything, we, we purchase it, you know. And I, I just looked at it. I was like, we paid money to watch this. You know, like it's I can't say it's the worst movie I've ever seen because I have seen The Exorcist, too, but it is up there on my least favorite movies I've ever seen. I do find it um, like don't like it's not really like the original number one. I do find it somewhat entertaining. Um, but yeah, it's not great. Right. Um but the thing with it, though, is when it came out, um, I have a daughter and um, she's 24 now. But when it came out, you know, she was younger, obviously. And it was just kind of something that she she kind of liked that movie. So yeah. I watched it with her kind of a thing. So I've seen it a million times and I own the movie. But yeah, it's not, you know, doesn't. I think that if, if, if I wouldn't have watched it directly after watching the OG one, I maybe might have liked it a little more. But yeah. when you go from watching that OG one, which is so fun and so campy, to watching yeah. that one, and you're just like, oh, yeah. uh, that's, un- that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, I do want to bounce back to uh, first thriller. And okay. what we're going to do now, Christy, is we are going to rank these movies on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking these movies on acting, production, score, direction, nothing like that, or the thriller video. What we're doing is strictly ranking these on how much they affected you on first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. What would you rank the thriller video? Five. (laughs) There's no way it can't be a five. I mean, it influenced so many different facets of your life. Like you said, whether it's the dance or whether it's horror movies, it all ties back to Michael Jackson thriller. So for if that was anything other than a five, I I would call bullshit on you. Bullshit. No way. (laughs) What about Freddy's Revenge? What would you rank that zero to five skulls on how much that one affected you? Um, I would say four. A four. Right. But especially like I think that when we're young kids, especially and we watch a horror movie, when we see things that um are relatable to us, it increases the horror that we're watching. Like you said, you rode a bus. So to watch that scene, that scene obviously sticks out for you because it's something you understand. It's something you know. Right. Um, I always feel like uh, The Exorcist probably affects young ladies a little more than it affects young men because we don't understand what goes on with a woman's body when we're that age. We don't understand you know, the scariness of the crucifix scene, for example. Right. Um, you know, And then as a parent, you watch these movies and you get a totally different feeling as well. Yeah, as a father to a little girl. I feel way different about The Exorcist as I did as a kid. You know, as a kid, I'm like, fuck it. She's possessed. Burn the house down. Who gives a shit? Right. You know, but as a parent, you're like, that's my little girl. I can't do that shit. Um, right. So I do want to say once again, Christy, thank you so much for coming on and being a guest yeah. here. Getting to know you has been truly amazing for me. I've been a big fan of you for a long time. Um, some of my very good friends, that horror couple turned me on to you. And so I knew that this is something I really wanted to be able to do. And again, guys, all the links are down in the description for all of Christie's social media, as well as Nightmare Toys and the soon-to-be Nightmare Cafe. So especially if you're over on the West Coast, you're taking a trip out to Vegas, you need to go there, you need to check it out. Or if you're not, they have the internet and you can do anything you want on the internet. So make sure you're checking out Nightmare Toys for all things spooky, not just toys and collectibles. Like she said, they have masks, they have shirts, they have vinyls. They have everything. And why do they have everything? Because they kick ass. That's why they have everything out there at Nightmare Toys. So make sure you guys are clicking these links down in the description so you can become a part of that family as well. Uh, Christy, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Uh, Everybody else, as always, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon.